Hello and welcome everybody to Advantage One RV. Today we have that 5,580 pounds dry weight, a J Feather 25BH, one owner that was originally sold just down the street at Haywood RV. Uh, it's got a super slide, bunks, private uh, front bedroom with some sliding pocket doors, and a nice little camp kitchen to get you outside and to keep a lot of the cooking heat and uh, cut down on the foot traffic going in and out of the RV. My name is Josh and I'm gonna be your guide today. One of the things I always like to do, I do the best I can to represent everything as fairly and, and with as much integrity and transparency as I can. Overall, the RV looks very good. It does have a spot where it had a leak in the past. It has since been resealed. It is not leaking currently, uh, but I think that's the kind of stuff that you guys need to be made aware of before we get too far along here. So we're gonna start by taking a look at that then we're gonna take a look at everything else because I, I think that if what you're looking for, uh, you need that super slide bunkhouse with that rainy day space when you are stuck inside a little bit, this is gonna be a great option here that's not gonna break the bank compared to a lot of the new RVs on the market today. So I use that dreaded L word, the leak word. That is a four letter word in the RV industry. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> Yes, it's a four-letter word. It's, it's just a four-letter word, period. You know what I mean. I think you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> that is the word that nobody wants to hear. And the reason I want to get this out of the way is, you know, this is the kind of camper that if you were new at this, if you didn't know what you're looking for, at a glance, you sure don't see anything wrong. That's because it, it really is minor, but that's, that's my assessment. You deserve to know about it. Make your own opinions here. And actually, the RV has been very well maintained from the, uh, the the previous owners, the only owners. This is a one owner used RV. First thing I did when I saw what I saw, we're going to get there in just a second, is I walked up here and I started checking out all the seams. And actually, uh, they all look really good. So I was really confused. I'm like, how the heck did it have a leak in the bunk area? Well, I, I, I was when I was getting down not like getting down, you know, like dancing, but when I was about to get down off the ladder, I noticed that extra little white spot right there. And all I can guess is that maybe a tree branch snagged it just enough that it allowed a little bit of a puncture in the roof membrane there, which gave just enough of a hole that likely nobody even realized it had happened until unfortunately it was a little too late. So when I stepped inside the RV, naturally I made a beeline back to that rear bunk corner to try to figure out what happened on the inside. And unfortunately, it did leave its mark in here. It looks like whatever that little tear or snag or puncture was, it did allow some water to wick down the inside of that wall. Now this is a Luan interior wall panel. You notice how it is uh, completely isolated to that rear corner though. Um, but the water did get to that wall. So the interior Luan panel did soak up some of that water, and unfortunately, it did cause a little bit of that. But you notice, even by the time we get down here to the lower bunk, it had pretty much resolved itself. But water works with gravity. It likes to go down, and I was curious to see how far down it went. So I hopped back outside, and I walked over here to the camp kitchen, which is below that bunk, and I do see a little signature here where some of that water wicking down the wall made its way down to the camp kitchen, and it is extremely minor, but it looks like it just the most basic level, just the slightest swelling on the T-molded countertop right here in the camp kitchen. That's all I see from it. Uh, it is absolutely not structural. It is absolutely cosmetic. And it's probably the kind of thing where when you're shopping and looking at the RV, I know it really st stands out at you like a sore thumb, but about the time you use the RV two or three times, I bet you forget it's, I bet you forget it's there. And after I saw that, I actually had an opportunity to speak with the, the owners of this RV, the people for whom we're selling it here on consignment at Advantage One. That's, that's what we do. But we can still do trades and financing. We can still do all that stuff. So don't let that confuse you too awful much. Um, and, and I asked him about that spot. And everything that I estimated about this RV was spot on and correlated perfectly with the, the owner's information. Um, he's uh, military, took excellent care of this. They went out and they had a good time. They used it a lot, but everybody took care of their stuff. Unfortunately, on one of their trips, there must have been like a tree branch or something that snagged and just put a tiny pinhole in that roof membrane back there. And he doesn't know when. He doesn't know when it happened. It wasn't until uh, a, a couple weeks ago he was up here cleaning it out, getting the kids' stuff out of the bunks when he looked over and went, oh, man. Went up, sealed that spot right away, and unfortunately, it did the thing that water tends to do. 
But other than that, which again, it's not hurting the RV structurally. It's just a little wrinkly wall panel in the bunk area that again, once you take six steps away, you're not even aware it's really back there. If you look beyond that, this is a beautiful camper that, I mean, 99% of it is in absolutely dynamite shape and condition here. It's an ideal family bunkhouse. I think it fits very nicely in with uh, a lot of potential half-ton towability. Central air, uh, no heat ducting in the floor, a great spring, summer, fall camper. Family time, man. This is a family time memory building camper right here. Um, so, you know, if the money's right, give us a call. And I leave a link in the video description, by the way, where you can see if it's still available and uh, what the owners are asking for it, by the way. Now, a couple things over here. I mentioned it does have sliding privacy doors for the front bedroom, and they actually latch, which is nice. Plus, that is the upgraded uh, trifold sleeper sofa. So you've got two double bunks, a dinette, which that's good for a big dog or a little kid. Chances are you'll never have to worry about really folding that down for sleeping, very rarely. You can sleep one or two decent-sized people on the sofa. You've got your uh, front queen bed up there in the uh, private bedroom space. You can sleep, you know, good for a small family, medium-sized, decently big family. You know, you might need to throw an air bed on the floor if you're going to let the kids all invite some friends. But there's a lot of potential sleeping here. And again, good rainy day space. By the way, there's a radiant barrier going through the slide floor on these Jacos. And this is a laminated aluminum uh, structured floor over here. Uh, same as the walls, packed with high-density bead foam, and uh, the roof is stick-built, though, with Jayco's Magnum Trust roof system, so the roof is really heavy-duty, and that little spot that had the leak, I actually walked, I stepped directly on it near the edge of that roof line, I just didn't want to do it on camera, I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing. Very solid up there, so their, their, their roof decking is done at what it's supposed to do. Give you a look at all the storage here, it's actually, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of good potential storage space going on with this thing. Some good drawers right down to the floor there. And I like that extra, um, oh, drawer there below the refrigerator. I think that's a nice touch. You also see a large pantry, or it can convert into a closet if need be. The appliances uh, look used regularly, but also cleaned out with regularity. And did you notice how below that bunk over there, there's like a hinge flip top below one of the mattresses? That's a giant storage chest itself. The other thing I thought about, that would be a great little spot to like add a little doggy door or something like that. Or that could be a nice little enclosed cat litter box area that you can flip open and clean out. Any cat campers out there, leave me a little note, you know, a little cat emoji or something. <laughs> now around the corner over here, both the upper and lower beds have these handy little stands uh, with their own individual outlets, which once again, for rainy days is just such a godsend to help, you know, the, the kids uh keep themselves occupied now both the upper and lower bunks also have their own individual lights which is nice and uh the uh, bathroom over here it's simple but effective uh you know it, it does what it needs to do it doesn't do anything more than that it does have a uh, a full mirrored medicine cabinet against the wall over here and some decent leg room i think a couple little drunken octopus uh towel hangers there it is a six and a half foot tall ceiling so uh if you're about six foot six one or under you're gonna stand in that without your head in the bubble if you're a couple inches bigger like me you might need to pop your head into that skylight but it's positioned properly it feels very organic i like the colors in here too i'm getting very much like reese's peanut butter cup vibes we got a peanut butter chocolate kind of goodness thing going on with this thing shoe garage by the door is another thing that's very handy here along with no vents in the floor just another way to help cut down on some of the dirt that gets tracked through the rv you just have a general rule you either take your shoes off outside and set them there or at least take them off right when you step inside the door our spinning entertainment center has a mirrored backer on this which is nice because it'll the, the room that the mirror is facing it'll look and feel a little bit bigger from the factory these did not have a television. I do see where the previous owner added one at one point though. So if you choose to do that, it's very easy to see where you need to mount it. I also see where they went ahead and uh, ran some HDMI plugs right here to, to give you a little bit higher definition uh, entertainment. Up front here, this is a Camp Queen. Uh, there is room, however, if you wanted to, Right now, it's got some butt scoot boogie room where you could get around the bed, but you could go to a true queen if you are so inclined. Of course, I have that TV box kind of in the way. Breeze windows on both sides, and see that little black bracket down there and that little clip? One of the nice things here is it's not just a sliding privacy door. It's actually, uh, it could latch for privacy, which is kind of nice. 
Now your dual hanging closets, something neat that they did here. A lot of people go, I'm camping. I don't need to hang up my clothes. So they actually include these little removable shelves from Jayco on these so that if you wanted to, you could convert it into some more dresser space. And if you're claustrophobic or if you need a CPAP machine, uh, you're nice and wide open. You know, you don't uh, you don't feel so enclosed and coffinated, which is different from caffeinated, by the way. Coffinated. That's a new nerdism. There it is. That's uh, let me add them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Number 37, by the way. I don't even know if it's showing up on camera, but it, it is like it's a beautiful sunny day. It's actually sprinkling just a little bit. It kind of reminds me of if you've ever had the fortune to uh, take a trip to uh, Hawaii then, um, which is how it's pronounced by the way, not Hawaii, but Hawaii, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, it'll be sunny and the winds will blow rain in from so many miles away, you can't even see clouds, it's crazy. But this is a great little camp kitchen. Jayco does an awesome low profile camp kitchen. So first of all, dad's medicine cabinet over here for the uh, barley water and uh, all those good things, maybe some bottled water and the barley water perhaps keeps the foot traffic from uh, you know getting overloaded inside the RV. Now that is a real sink that actually does drain. It's not the dog dish style, which I've never been a fan of. You'll never hear me say, oh boy, this has a dog dish camp kitchen. I'll point it out, but I'm never gonna be too terribly excited about it. Also, handy little two burner stovetop here that when you're not using it, could just kind of be a stainless steel prep space. Also, notice extra easy reach outlets in a couple key areas so if you do want to have a little outdoor phone charger station or you know like the the rv has speakers up top but you do kind of got to crank the volume to 11 on those things to be able to hear them from ground level and the neighbors always think that your music sucks sometimes a nice little portable bluetooth speaker just sitting on your picnic table helps keep neighbors happy and you still get to enjoy the music you like and frankly the portable speakers often sound better than camper speakers anyway now from there, take a look at this patio awning. I love that it encompasses both the main entry door and the outside kitchen. So many manufacturers love to cut it short and not cover the camp kitchen. And when it's got a big camp kitchen, all right, I can kind of see it. I do still prefer it to be covered, but when it's a low profile camp kitchen like this, it makes the most sense. There is lighting below that. The whole RV actually is LED lit inside and out. I believe with the only exception being the single light above the stove top. And this down here is probably two of the most important features on this trailer that likely get some of the very least amount of attention. First of all, the Goodyear Endurance radials with those beautiful aluminum wheels. Secondly, the Equiflex suspension system right there. This is a lightweight trailer, decent length. Again, pretty good fit for a lot of half ton towing and going. If you're gonna be zipping down the road, you want something that's going to help soak up the shocks and the jolts of road transit. And that's what that yellow thing between the tires is gonna do right there. It's a big rubber shock dampener. Just an extra layer of protection on this fun little onion we got here. Funyun, <gasps> Funyuns. Oh, you think that's how they came up with that name? Oh, never mind. Decent sized pass-through. Notice you got some leveling blocks up there. Uh, another thing that you're going to see included with this trailer from the previous owners is the original uh, Recurve R3 hitching on the ground right as we work our way around the nose right about now. And, uh, uh, sorry. I think the next thing I'm going to do is put some jacks down and I don't, I'm not exactly liking the Jenga block setup that we have going on under that tongue jack right there. Obviously it was stable enough that I've been through the trailer with my fat butt two or three times and it didn't rock and roll anywhere around, but I'd rather make sure that we don't end up with a dropped trailer and a bent tongue jack. So we'll do that after filming here. But Recurve R3 hitching system. If you're not familiar with this, it is both anti-sway and weight distributing so that you don't, uh, you know, have the, the back of your vehicle getting sunk while you're towing, basically. It is also a quieter kind of hitch because where it actually pivots is up here on the head. Once, uh, like everything that hooks to the trailer doesn't move so much, and uh, where that is really nice. Man, if you are backing into a camp space at night, uh, as opposed to a common friction weight distribution and anti-sway system that like squeaks and creaks and moans and groans, it's a far quieter system. You can back in, you can open the slide, you can sleep, and then you can worry about finishing setting up in the morning, uh, you know, during normal daylight hours when uh, an impact drill driver on those corner jacks is making too much racket for nighttime setup. 
And even on this overcast day, just a beautiful look on this trailer. Those blue accents really jumping out at me. Blue has always said Jayco to me. I don't know why. There's something about it that just maybe because, you know, the Blue J logo. There's something about Jayco that just reads blue to me. And the color palette on this, I like. And the inside, again, that Reese's Peanut Butter Cup smoothness in there. This does have black tank flush. It does have an outside utility shower. It is uh, rear view camera ready. I mean, again, all those important things that you're going to want uh, for every single trip, the buttons and the switches and the widgets and the whiz bangs, you're gonna want every time you go out, this has them, this is family camping, but it's it's comfortable, it's still a little bit cozy, it's not over the top super glamping style yet, like if you know what I mean there, Moonbeam. So thank you very much for joining us today down here at our family operated shop. If you appreciate the way that we show you the ins and the outs, the ups and the downs, like the video, hit the subscribe button and follow along if you haven't already. And when you're ready, we're ready, whether it's this one or anything else that we might have down here. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.